we're going to be solving some equations that involve some brackets today. There are two strategies that can work for this style of equation. There's one strategy that will always work, and there's one strategy that only sometimes works, but sometimes it can actually make life a little bit easier. So we're going to talk about how to identify which strategy to use and how to solve equations evolving brackets. So looking at this first question here, let's talk about the two strategies. The first strategy that always works, and I'm going to call this strategy number one. Let's expand the bracket first. This strategy will work in any situation that you deal with. The other situation, which only sometimes works, if this number at the front here and this number that you have on the other side of the equal sign have a common factor, for example, in this question, 2 and 18, well, common factor of 2, we can actually divide both sides by that 2 to get rid of it. Now, you'll see this doesn't always work. In the next question, for example, we've got 5 and 18. Now, you could technically still divide both sides by 5, but then you'll be dealing with 18 over 5, and things can get a little bit messy. So when I say both methods, uh, first method works all the time, second method works some of the time, second method will always work, but you'll end up with yucky fractions if you don't have a nice common factor with those numbers. So I really recommend strategy number one. Um, for a question like B here. So let's write down divide both sides by common factor. So let's actually get into these questions and we'll talk about both strategies for A and B, but then we'll select which one's most appropriate for the question moving forwards. Okay, so this question here, let's first start by doing method number one. Method number one is expanding this out. So that means on the left hand side, we're going to be expanding out that bracket. So two times X gives us two X and two times that five gives us 10. And that's going to equal 18. Now we've got an equation that's very familiar to solve. We're going to take 10 away from both sides. So two X is going to equal eight and then we'll divide both sides by two. X equals four. Notice that we're lining up these lovely equal signs and you can imagine if we put a line around them, they sort of look like a baguette, a lovely long French um, loaf of bread. Whoopsie. So that's method number one. Let's try method number two for this question. Method number two involves dividing both sides by this number here, two. Now, if we divide the left-hand side by two, we've got two times what's inside of the brackets here. So if we do two times what's inside of the bracket divided by two, we've undone that two outside of the brackets. So we're just left with that x plus five. We don't need that x plus five in brackets anymore because it's not multiplying with anything because we undid that times two. Now that's going to equal 18 divided by two, which is nine. Now we'll take five away from both sides, x equals four. So you'll notice using strategy two for part A, we only needed two lines of working out rather than the three using strategy one. Same answer, both methods equivalent. Okay, looking at this next one, I think strategy one's gonna be our best bet. I think expanding out the bracket and then solving is gonna mean that we're only dealing with fractions in the very last line. You're welcome if you'd like to try method two um, on the side of your page and compare to what we get here, but you'll see that we'll be dealing with fractions much earlier on in the question. Now, I adore fractions, but I much prefer them to be something that we're dealing with in the last line of our equation, if at all possible. So let's look at this one now. We are going to expand this out. So that's going to give us 5x equals 18. Notice we don't need equal signs on the edge here because all of our equal signs are in between the left-hand side and right-hand side of our equation. So now we're going to subtract 25 from both sides. So that leaves us on the left-hand side with 5x, and then we're going to have 18 minus 25. Now that's going to take us into negative territory, and we're going to get negative 7. Now dividing both sides by 5, x is going to be negative 7 divided by 5. Well, I love an improper fraction. Now, one thing I just wanted to note there, I wrote that as negative 7 over 5. Still a little thinking cloud over here. I could have written that as negative 7 over 5. I could have also written that like I did with the negative out the front, 7 over 5, because 
negative number divided by a positive number means the overall answer would be negative. Now, we could have also written this as 7 over negative 5. That's equivalent, but that one's a little bit strange. It's a bit like wearing pyjamas to school. You're technically clothed, but it looks a little bit odd. So my preferred answer would be this one, but I don't mind if you present it like this. If you did the last one, technically correct, but in future year levels, um, you wouldn't be permitted to have the negative sign in the denominator. Pajamas at school situation. Okay, this question's a little bit different because I notice we've got three times, and then in brackets, 3n plus 3, but we've also got this plus 8 afterwards that's hanging out on the end. And that equals negative 13. So with this question here, because it's not a simple um, question that has, you know, a number out the front of brackets equals another number, and these two numbers don't have, <laughs> that looks like a funny face, <laughs> these two numbers don't have a common factor, I think let's just go ahead and expand out that first bracket. So expanding that out means we're going to have, oops, I nearly wrote my equal signs at that left-hand side. Remember, we don't need to do that here. Uh, and you might find when you're doing equations that um, desire to do, to do so is very strong. So perhaps I'll just put my equal sign underneath that first equal sign here to avoid that temptation. So that's going to give me 15m plus 9. Don't forget we had that plus 8 that was waiting to hang out equals negative 13. Now, so going from here to here, we expanded. Whenever you are working with equations, if you find some like terms, deal with those before you move on. I notice we have plus 9 plus 8. So let's write deal with like terms. Oops, this misspelled like. <laughs> so dealing with that first means our solving process is going to be a lot neater later on. So that means in our next line, we could write that as 15m plus 17 equals negative 13. Haven't done any more to solve it. We've just dealt with those like terms. Now let's continue with our solving. We're going to take 17 away from both sides. So 15m is going to be negative 13 take away 17. We're getting even more negative, so negative 30. Then we'll divide both sides by 15. So on the left-hand side, 15m divided by 15, we're just left with m. Negative 30 divided by positive 15. Negative divided by positive is a negative. 30 divided by 15 is 2. Lovely. Now you might think that this question looks a little similar to the last one in that we have um, a bracket and we're adding something else on. But an important distinction, this plus 5 is inside of this set of brackets. It's not outside of the brackets like the last one. So it is attached to that 6. Now, noticing the numbers that we've got here, we've got a 6 and we've got a negative 18. I think it would be really sensible to divide both sides by 6 to get rid of that time 6 at the front of the left-hand side. Doing that means that, well, we've gotten rid of the 6, so we just have x plus 1 over 2 plus 5. We don't need brackets anymore because we're not multiplying everything by 6 anymore. We must remember whatever we do to the left-hand side, we must do the right-hand side as well. So negative 18 divided by 6 will be negative 3. Perhaps on the side we'll try um, if we'd expanded everything out, but I think it's actually a little more complex for this question, making more work for ourselves. Okay, looking at this question now, we now need to subtract 5 from both sides. We can't multiply everything by 2 yet, or we could, but we'd also need to multiply that plus 5 along with the minus 3 and this fraction. So it's a little easier to take that 5 away, so we don't need to think about it. So x plus 1 on 2 is going to equal negative 3 minus 5 is minus 8. Now let's multiply everything by 2. x plus 1 is going to be negative 16. And we'll subtract 1 from both sides. x is going to be minus 17. Not negative 15, because we're at negative 16 and we're getting negative, uh, we're minusing 1, so we're getting even more negative. If we had expanded things out, well, that 6 has got to multiply with this one here, and it needs to multiply with this term here. So if we, you know, decided to do a different strategy here, we would have had 6, and then that would have been times by 
um, that x plus 1 over 2. So we could represent that by just multiplying it with the denominator. What I've effectively done is 6 over 1 times x plus 1 over 2. And we need brackets around that x plus 1 over 2 to make sure that that 6 multiplies with everything. We haven't also multiplied 6 um, on the bottom, so we haven't multiplied the denominator by that, because 6 is a whole number that can be written over 1. Okay, so um, we expanded that bit out, and then we need to do that 6 times that 5, so plus 30 equals minus 18. Okay, if we were to solve this, we'd need to subtract that 30 first. So we've still got that 6, x plus 1, over 2, equals negative 18, take away 30, will be at negative 48. Now we're going to times by 2, 6, x plus 1, equals... Oh, this really isn't as nice of a strategy, because we're dealing with much bigger numbers here. So negative 48 times 2, 2 lots of 40 would be 80, 2 lots of 8 would be 16, so we're at negative 96. 96, is it divisible by 6? Let's do that. 96 divided by 6 goes into that one time, and there's 3 remainder. Ah, goes in 16 times. So I'm dividing both sides by 6 to get rid of that 6 out the front. x plus 1 equals negative 16. And then we need to subtract 1. x equals negative 17. Look at that, we had the same answer, but I think the first strategy was a little more efficient here. Okay, let's look at the last one. Now, in this question here, oh goodness, that's a lot of scribble. In this question here, um, we've got, it looks like x's on both sides. We're still going to deal with the fact that we've got a bracket here to get us started. No bracket on the left-hand side, but let's deal with the bracket situation on the right-hand side. So let's write that left hand side just waiting to join in and then we're going to do 3 times 4x will be negative 12x and sorry that was negative 3 times 4x and negative 3 times positive 7 will be minus 21. My strategy with this is identify the smallest value um, that has a pronumeral attached. In this example that would be that negative 12. So to counteract that we do the opposite Instead of minus 12, we will plus 12x. So what does that give us? On the left-hand side, if we have negative 10x and we add 12x, we're going to have 2x minus 15. And on the right-hand side, negative 12x plus 12x, well, the whole point was to undo that negative 12x, so we have minus 21. Let's now add 15 to both sides. So we're at negative 2x. Um, sorry, we're at positive 2x on this side, and negative 21 plus positive 15 is going to give us negative 6. Then we're going to divide both sides by 2. Negative 3. And that's our final answer. Brilliant.